folks, Scott here with a how-to video today. You asked for it and I am going to give it to you. This is a how-to on how to create this swinging card. This is using the stamps and dies from the My Monthly Hero May 18 card kit. We are using this Swinging Girl stamp. We are using this Tree Branch stamp. We are using the Swinging By to Say Hello sentiment. We'll also, of course, use the Swinging Girl die as well. Now this is everything cardstock wise that you need for this card. This is my card base. This is a plain ivory staples ivory cover stock. I keep this card stock on hand for templates and trial runs and occasionally it comes in handy for card bases. The color works very well. I have three pieces of Recollections craft card stock. This is four and a quarter by five and a half. I have a mat already cut at four inches by five and a quarter. And I have two pieces of that craft cardstock that I've cut down to three and three quarters by five inches. I just used a Lawn Fawn stitched rectangle die. I like the stitch detailing on the edges that that gives me. This is going to be our card front. This is going to be our card back. This is going to be our card base and a mat. So let's stamp this out. Now the only real issue you need here is you need at least a little over an inch from the top of this. So it's got to accommodate our pull tab, etc, etc. Kind of put this in the middle of the card. We're looking for our swinging girl to attach about right there in the center. So if you make sure that that center branch is nice and horizontal, that will help with the whole layout. You can always check the straightness of your sentiment against the grid lines. We will go ahead and stamp these without the swing girl with Versafine Onyx Black ink. And go ahead and stamp both of these at the same time. Of course, Onyx Black ink should give us a nice impression. And that's pretty good. <laughs> Except my <laughs> sentiment is upside down. <laughs> Let's try that again. <laughs> Therein, of course, lies my trepidation in <laughs> live videos. Okay, I think that's more like it. Uh, let's check. We're about in the center here. Plenty of room for our swinger. Let's try that one again. <laughs> there we go. That looks good. I like using the Misty just in case I need to do a second stamping if I didn't get good coverage on the first. That looks good for our first stamping. Now we'll take the sheet that has not been cut down and we will stamp our swinging girl on this stamp. Now you want to leave plenty of room above the girl for the extension of her swinging strings. For extension on the rope, you're going to die cut this out with partial die cutting. So just stamp this on your third piece. That's a good impression. Now the die cuts in this kit cut out a little line around your stamp so it's not directly cutting right on the stamp. So that's why I matched my swinging stamp paper with the background paper. So you don't really notice the extra paper around the edges. So let's get this lined up as good as as close as we can. Now we're going to do some partial die cutting on that piece, which I think most everybody knows what partial die cutting means, but we'll demonstrate here in case you don't. So my cutting plate on the bottom, I do have a metal shim on my cuddle bug. Now I don't want to cut the top of this die cut. I want the strings to go longer. So I will put my top plate below the top of that die cut. So the machine will die cut everything below the top plate. It will not die cut anything above the top plate. I often find it easier to do the no cut part on the tail end of my cut instead of trying to lead in with that. 
So again, your top plate is not covering the top of that die cut, so it should not cut the top of that die cut. We want to extend that longer. So that gives us our die cut girl without the top part of her swing cut out. So we want to make that string longer. So I'll just take a ruler and a craft knife. Line that up with that cut line along those strings and just extend that further. As much as you want to go, we'll cut off the excess later. That's one side. Put your craft knife in the cut. And now we have a really nice long string, swinging string for the girl. So there we have our swinging girl with an extra long swing string. We are going to need a pull tab for our card. So from the same piece of cardstock, I'm going to cut five eighths of an inch for my pull tab. I thought a half an inch was a little short. I uh, thought three quarters of an inch was a little fat. I found that a five eighths inch pull tab works very nicely. So while we still have our stamp pad out. I'm going to go ahead and use my corner chompers to chomp the corners of one end of this pull tab. This is the quarter inch side. There you go. Nice and smooth, nice and even. Then I do reach for my favorite things, interactive labels. Very cheap, inexpensive stamp set. We're going to stamp a pull on the end of our pull tab here. I, of course, Love using my Misty just in case. That looks pretty good. We'll stamp that again with our Versamark Onyx Black Ink. A nice simple pull on the end of our pull tab. That should be all the stamping we need for our card today. So let's take a look at our card front here. We want the string stamps to hide right behind that branch. And we do want her right in the center of the card. So just using my little mat here to guide myself. There she is, right in the middle. I'm just going to mark either side of this die cut just to tell me the width of the die cut, just with a little pencil mark right at the bottom edge of that tree branch. Now this is where we're going to cut our slit. Now when I first started thinking about this card, I was like, oh, we need a hinge here, we need a hinge there. I thought we could simplify it because this is such a small little piece that I thought it would provide a fulcrum all on its own with just a tiny slit through our card front. So between those two lines, I'm gonna cut with my craft knife right along the edge of that branch. Just from pencil mark to pencil mark. Now because cardstock is thicker than a cut from a blade, I'm going to open that up a little bit and cut a matching line just below that. Just below the both of those. Turn it around here. Just below that first cut. So I create more of a slot opening than a slit opening. Connect the edges, and there we have our slit has turned into a slot so it can accommodate the width of the paper. So once you've got that slot cut, you can erase your pencil marks. And you can see that the swinging die cut will slide right through there. Now we do want the strings to hide behind the branch, so pull it up just a little past beyond. I'm going to throw just a little piece of tape on that die cut just to hold her into place on the front. Now we can start working on the mechanism. On that second piece of cardstock that of course has been stamped incorrectly, but I'm going to use it anyway. I'm going to cut a half an inch away from the top. Half an inch 
away from the top. Now, since we know that this is the same width as our card front, we can go ahead and glue that right to the top of the back of our card front. And we're doing this to create a channel for the pull tab to move in. I was really trying to create a pull tab card that has virtually no dimensions to it whatsoever. It's extremely flat, which I think is part of the fun of this card. You could, of course, go in and make these channels with foam tape and make the card much thicker than it is. But I think part of the, I think a great part of the charm is how unexpectedly thin the entire card is. So there's the top part of our channel. We know that that matches up with the card front perfectly. Make sure it's all hidden behind there. I like using my liquid glue for this because it gives me a little bit of time to wiggle and wobble. Now this is where our pull tab is going to go. It's going to go right there and slide so we know we need another 5 8 inches off of our spare piece here. So we're going to cut another 5 8 of an inch off. That is going to be the width of our pull tab. And if we make these cuts accurately, I'll just show you a little mark there. <laughs> and here's the bottom part of our card, leaving just enough for our pull tab to slide between those two pieces of cardstock. Now this piece will move back and forth. We do want to allow it some room to move. So you can feel where it comes through the paper. So that's going to be begin our opening right there. That's where the slot is. We want the opening to be a little further back here so that this tab can move back and forth. So that's one side. We turn it around. We'll move our girl to the apex of her swing to the right. Turn it around. And mark that angle on that paper. We'll move her to the left, to the apex of her swing. Like in which she's just about sitting up straight. Hold that in place. We'll mark that angle on the back of our cardstock here, too. Now we're going to cut this notch away. And what this is going to do is just give some room for the swing tab to move back and forth. That's our little notch. That'll glue onto the back here. That allows our swinging tab to move from that far to that far, that far to that far. So that's all we've done there is given a little extra opening for her swing to move. Now I'm going to go ahead and glue this down. And you do want your glue to get as close to the edges as possible, but you don't want it to exceed past those edges. There's the back of our card. That's the slot for our swing that goes through to the front of the card. This is our little channel here that will allow the tab to slide freely. Now let's go ahead and make a stop for that tab. A quarter inch is plenty as far as our little stop point. If you cut that out of your extra long pull tab, you know it'll fit perfectly in that little space. Wrong side. <laughs> you do want your little tab to go on the right side of your back here because the card is going to pull from the right. So you need to block off the left, which is the right when you're looking at the back. Oh, it's oh so complicated. Actually, this is really simple. Okay, so we've got a stop over here, a bottom and a top. <laughs> this will be the boundary 
for our sliding tab. Now, of course, obviously our sliding tab is much more than we need it to be. So let's go ahead and figure out the length of this sliding tab. That's our card base. That's our mat. This is the front. So we want this to stick out just the tiniest bit past the edge of the card. Just the tiniest bit. It'll still fit in an envelope, but it shows that there's a definite tab to be pulled over here. So we are a quarter of an inch in here from the edge of this. So that's a quarter of an inch is about right there. Let's cut that off. Again, it's all paper. If you have any issues or problems or you cut something wrong, you can always cut it again. <laughs> so that means our pull tab at its base still leaves the pull just showing outside of that. That would go on the mat. The mat then goes on the card front. That looks very good. If you want a measurement, this is going to be one, two, three, three and three quarter inches. I think that's really close to three and three quarter inches. Three and three quarter inches. That's the length of your pull tab. That takes into account a quarter inch of a stop on this side. So let's figure out where she intersects with the pull tab. So we want her all the way in so we don't see those lines. We'll take her to her extreme. Swing to the right. Just tape her down lightly. Put your pull tab in. And I'm going to mark the pull tab where the swing tab crosses it. Either side of the line. Now that's going to be where she starts. So this is where the tab from the swing is going to attach to our pull tab. I'm just going to take an eighth of an inch hole punch here. This is just an eighth of an inch hole punch. And I'm going to punch a couple of holes between those two lines. about in the center of that pull tab. Instead of cutting a slit here or a slot here, I thought that a couple of holes would give plenty of room for the movement that is needed. I'm gonna trim back those little extra points a bit. Now when we slide this back in, we're going to slide it slide our swing tab through that and then we're going to fold it back on itself that's all fold it back on itself that's going to hold it we do want to trim this so it stays within the parameters of the pull tab like that. I think you can see that. Just lay it down flat on our board and give it a little try. There you go. She's swinging. That is in its slot. She's actually, her strings are actually exposed just a little bit. So I'm going to take that where I folded that and I'm going to fold that just a little bit further. It's a little bit further. That should keep her string from becoming exposed as she travels back and forth. That is basically it. <laughs> that is basically it, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> It is so, so simple. That is all we're dealing with here. The little double holes allow that piece to move freely. We will glue this all down to our card front. Let's assemble this card. I've got a nice piece of dark brown textured cardstock for this. I think I used my pearlescence 
cardstock for my first card, but I found this in my stash. This is a great mat. We do need to still cut a finger notch for this. So we'll put these together, add this to our card front. One of my least favorite activities, trying to get everything squared up. Well, let's put this in the approximate place where we're going to use it and we can mark on our card base. I have an old one inch hole punch. Let's try and mark just the center of that, just a little beyond half here. And I don't want to cut the back of the card, just the front of the card, just enough to grab onto that. Erase our guidelines again. And now we're ready to glue this puppy down. Now, in order to help hold the tab in place while we're gluing, I'm going to take a nice piece of tape and just tape the end of that pull tab to the front of the card right where it's supposed to be. That'll hold it in place pretty well. This is butted up against its stop over here. The swing is through the holes and let's glue this baby up. Again, you want to be close to the edges but not on top of them. Not too much glue so it doesn't ease out all over the place. You could use, of course, double-sided tape for these. I like a little wiggle room. Once this is glued flat, there's very little chance of things coming undone. Center that on our mat. That looks pretty good. Before we make a final press, make sure that your pull tab is still loose and is not caught up. And there's our card. <laughs> I always get so paranoid when I'm doing a how-to because I just know I'm not going to be able to do it right. When I put these cards together with my 10 cards kit, I'm just experimenting and just working on it as I go along. I rarely write anything down. This was such a simple pull card to do and would work in so many different applications that I did want to share it with everybody. As it dries, just keep going in there and pulling on your tab. Make sure you haven't glued your tab down. This is so much fun. There you go, folks. I hope that explains what's ultimately a very simple card idea to you. This is virtually a flat card, almost completely flat. Swinging by to say hello. Thanks for joining me, folks. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you don't laugh too hard at my mistakes. <laughs> and I do hope you give this a try. <laughs> Swinging by to say hello. All of those folks that got that stamp set, this is just a lovely interactive card to send to anybody. Thank you so much for joining me today. Please, please, please let me know if you give this a try and if you are successful. Thanks so much for sharing your time with me today. Please like me, list me, pin me, post me, share me with all of your friends. Don't run with scissors. <laughs> and of course, as always, happy crafting.